Hello there, and welcome to Weird Music on the Glumberger channel. So brace yourselves, it's time for another minimal sustained drone album of a single note for pretty much 44 minutes. Because <laughs> we haven't explored enough of those yet, have we? <laughs> but, 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 in, in all seriousness, um, today we are going to be looking at an incredible project that has gained some incredible notoriety for the kinds of albums they've pushed out over their career. Some of which would be perfect to discuss in episodes, but you know, sadly so, would be literally impossible to do. <laughs> some of them anyway, some of them anyway. Um, but the thing is, I really wanted to talk about this particular band, and I think by starting right at the very beginning of this band's discography, you know, uh, we're able to both talk about an album by this band and talk about the band. <laughs> and to be fair, like this debut album, it's one that's you know, incredibly strange and unusual, and downright odd for the most part. So, today I present to you the debut album by Bull of Heaven, titled Weed Problem. So, there's going to be a lot to discuss about Bull of Heaven. This is an incredibly strange project that I just have to talk about, you know, especially ever since I first discovered them and, like, the crazy stuff this band got up to. So, let's ask ourselves, who are Bull of Heaven? Well, Bull of Heaven um, was a collaborative project from musician Clayton Counts and Neil Keener. And the band had operated since 2008, uh, with the first release under the Bull of Heaven moniker being the very album we're discussing today, Weed Problem. And across their career, Bull of Heaven, you know, they've pushed out this, you know, this incredible plethora of experimental album releases that mostly delves into the world of drone music. But also sometimes it does explore other genres here and there, you know, they uh, have released albums of spoken word, progressive rock, post-rock, uh, harsh noise, and a bunch of others. As well though, um, you know, talking about this collaborative project in the past tense, it was in 2016, however, you know, very regrettably that member Clayton Counts passed away. And it was around two years after the fact that Neil Keener um, was able to start the project up again, uh, you know, continuing it as a solo project under the same Bull of Heaven moniker to this very day. Incredibly sad, but um, the contributions from Counts, though, like in terms of like pushing this project to like limits, was just insane, and they're you know, very regrettable that he passed away, but. There is now this incredible body of work that you know, you know really, you know, it, it, it's it's weird, it's weird, but it's 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 very interesting that he was able to create this body of work and stuff, and though know, that far, far outlives himself actually, in you know both a sort of what's the word, a abstract way, but also a literal way as well. We'll get into that in a bit. <laughs> um. Anyway, anyway, uh. So this review, this review, uh, it could begin in one of two places. We can discuss the very album we're looking at, Weed Problem, or we can discuss the band. And for those of you who don't know, um, like when we start to discuss the band, you'll see exactly why it's incredibly important to discuss like the, the history of this band, their projects and their many album releases that they have released under this moniker. Um, you'll understand exactly why. But, of course, though, this being weird music, I always like to talk about specific albums as well, so hence why I chose Weed Problem as the one to discuss. So, what we're going to do, um, you know, do we discuss the album first, or do we discuss the band first? Well, I don't know. We're going to let the wheel decide. <laughs> Okie dokie, so here's the wheel. We've got on one side the band, on the other side we have the album. Let's see what it chooses.
Hey, look at that, look at that. We're discussing the album first. <laughs> oh, good, good stuff, good stuff. Right, yeah, let's just dive into weed problems, shall we? <laughs> right, the first album by Bull of Heaven. So simply put, Weed Problem is a 44-minute low-end drone recording that pushes with this incredibly ominous presence, you know? You mostly just get this rising wub sound in the background, you know? It's coming across as a really zonked out pulse of absurdly slow proportions, whilst over the top of it you're getting the most strangest and unsettling drones that start to paint this much more abstract picture. And uh, the recording does continues along uh, much in the same fashion, you know. Um, uh, I would arguably say, though, that it's kind of like, you know, uh, three different dry recordings stitched together, to be fair. But it all just moves along, moves, moves along and stuff. Um, and you get a lot of changes in, like, the abstract rate. It's very slow. But I would say that there's, you know, compared to the last two drone albums we looked at, Grogory, Gay, 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 and Angelo Vincent Jr., um, there's a little bit more that Bull of Heaven are kind of doing with it from time to time. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, the main dominating force of this drone, though, is it's this spectacular low end rumble of bass that is so hypnotizing, you know? And it's offset by a number of different kinds of musical drones, you know? It gives the entire recording itself, you know, this, um, this sense of narrative, you know, as though we're being pushed further and further into this murky, drug-induced miasma. <laughs> what I find interesting, though, um, you know, uh, it's like I said, it being kind of split up into these three different parts, it fades into this, uh, into this pure silence, and then it all just starts up again into a different drone, um, and they all kind of last around 15 minutes each, if that makes sense. Um, and with the second one, though, everything starts sounding really weirdly distorted, as though it's been like put through a filter, as though our very perception of what we're hearing has been completely altered. Um, you still get those phenomenal bassy rumbles, though, as it progresses, as well as these echoing filters and microsound explosions in the background. And it's an interesting section, but it doesn't just end there, though. There is, of course, the final 15 minutes, the third part of this track. You get that fade into silence, and then once again it all builds up and rises out the silence into the next movement. And at this point, you can hear the rumbling drone of the instruments themselves. They start sounding so peculiar and unusual as they start hurtling themselves towards the forefront. And it's all very slowly though, very slowly it all starts to melt away into this very peculiar drone movement that pushes out once again that low end and it's accompanied by such an array of unusual and distorted instrumental effects, you know, it pings, whines, twists and warps in very unusual ways. And what I find interesting is the sort of uh, lo-fi, you know, it's, I, I would argue it's sort of like a lo-fi version of Earth 2 special low frequency version sounds, you know, you, it, like, you know, there's a sound of the bass guitar itself, you know, just sounding very, you know, slightly distorted and stuff like that, but yeah, very, very peculiar. And um, yeah, it just it all just gets so much more distorted and stranger and it creates for us this very confusing experience where we can't tangibly expect what's going to be coming as it all progresses along, you know, because of this very strange narrative. And for me, you know, uh, I think the whole thing just comes across as this one incredibly zonked out experience, perhaps expressed by the weedy notion of the album's title and cover art. And I have to say, what an interesting way to launch off your entire career, right? <laughs> so, that essentially covers Weed Problem, the debut album from Bull of Heaven. And all in all, with regards to the type of music we covered on this channel, seems pretty par for the course, right? Strange, odd, but, you know, we've looked at unusual drone records, and, you know, maybe that's becoming a norm now, so... However, however, this brings us to the second part of this video, where we discuss Bull of Heaven as a project and their incredibly eclectic discography. So those of you who know, know. You know damn well what's coming and what we're going to be discussing here, but I think this is truly fascinating and, you know, just it, it, it amazes me and it, I'm kind of excited to talk about it. <laughs> so, what makes Bull of Heaven so strange and unusual that as a band we have to talk about their discography. Well, 
It's entirely in part, I would argue, to the incredible lengths of their albums, which seem to just get longer and longer and longer the more the band progressed into their absurd level of experimentalism. And so, to start off your whole discography with a 44 minute long album is already pushing it a little bit. I mean, it's nothing compared to stuff we've heard of before, but, you know, to the average person, 44 minutes is far too long for a song, right? Um, however though, 44 minutes is a drop in the ocean compared to what, uh, you know, the band ended up pushing out though. You know, uh, you know, Bill of Heaven, they took it even further and further with each and every release. And so they're, we're just going to go through them, through a whole bunch of them, and you'll see how it just ramps up, up and up. So the 19th release, Hypnosis, Drugs and Mind Control, The Beginning, A Touch, um, this surpassed eight hours in length. <laughs> Longer even than natural snow buildings, Daughters of Darkness, I would say. You're like, right? <laughs> However, let's keep going. The 28th release, even to the edge of doom. It was the first Bull of Heaven release to la last exactly an entire day in length. 24 hours of Bull of Heaven. <laughs> But what about release number 150? We're going to jump ahead in terms of the discography here. With bare feet, I trod upon thorns and flints. This lasted two days, one hour, 54 minutes and 39 seconds in length. <laughs> it's absurdly long, but still, it is nothing compared to what is coming. If you go back a bit, album 45, The Wicked Case from Struggling, comes in at 168 hours in length. And what amazes me about this one in particular, though, uh, somebody on Rate Your Music listened to the entire thing over the, over the course of around four and a half years and gave their opinion on the entire recording. <laughs> I think that is truly brilliant, but mad of you. Like, how can you manage that? Still, 168 hours? Nah, nah, nothing, nothing. Uh, Album 208, As You Etch on the Inner Window of Your Eye, 916 hours in length. <laughs> like, it's getting to lengths that are just, literally, you can't listen to this whole thing, it's just too much. But of course, they take it even further than that. Uh, you've got uh, the incredibly, uh, it, this is probably the most well-known Bull of Heaven album now, it's almost like a meme at this point, but this is perhaps what they're most well-known for, is the album Like a Walk in Which an Insect Lives and Gnaws, 5.7 years in length. <laughs> like, I can't fathom that, that's, that's too much, that's too long, like you can't listen to that, can you? <laughs> But 5.7 uh, years in length, that's, once again, that's nothing. That's nothing to what they've done. <laughs> like, one of the most interesting parts of the whole Bull of Heaven uh, discography is the ICM series. Um, uh, it all just uh, climbed, uh, it, it, it's a, a series of albums they did. Start uh, with the first album, starts with two seconds in length. Easy peasy, right? But then it all uh, just... Uh, you know, get, tr climbs up drastically and drastically up the prime numbers sequentially, all the way up to uh, the last album that lasts eight septillion years. Eight septillion. Like, I'll put the number here that it is, but <laughs> this is an incomprehensible number. <laughs> like, it's literally impossible to listen to this. There's no way you could listen to this. But what if I told you that 8 septillion years isn't even the longest album that he did? <laughs> it's nothing compared to the likes of, uh, of the run of albums they did from 207 to 310. The latter of which uh, lasts 3.343 quindensillion years. Like, I'm pretty sure that is longer than what they expect the universe to exist for. <laughs> An album that doesn't just outlast its artist, but outlast the entire existence of everything. <laughs> like, how can you listen to this? You can't. 
<laughs> oh, I just think it's so funny. It's so ridiculous, but... Like, I think it's amazing. Like, you know, it's not like... You, you can't... It's not even that you can get... You can't even get through certain albums within this discography. But, like, there's ones where, like... There's albums you can't listen to. You can't listen to the whole thing of the discography that they've done. Like, it's all just unlistenable because it's too long. And that's the point, right? That, it, it's very baffling, very baffling. I'm, I'm amused because I'm kind of just baffled by it. <laughs> but yeah, you can kind of easily see why the Project Bull of Heaven uh, gained so much notoriety. I mean, you know, uh, how, did they, how did they do this? Like, um, essentially, it's all nested files, you know, uh, zip, 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 like just getting smaller and smaller, I think. And very strange puzzles of extracting them in the right way and stuff. Um, it's also worth mentioning though, but before we sort of uh, close off and stuff and go into the end of stuff, it's actually worth mentioning, you know, these albums that last as long as the universe itself, you know, that's all well and interesting, but what about the album with muffled sound obliterating everything? This album lasts minus 47 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> or the album studying the building from changing angle minus four hours and 39 minutes <laughs> albums of negative length how are you supposed to listen to that and then as well within this strange discography there's even albums absent of track list lengths you know albums locked behind unknown passwords locked behind hidden esoteric game and it's to be played only by those willing to delve into the mindset of this band and figure out what the hell is going on. <laughs> it's without a doubt, I think without a doubt, one of the most absurd discographies I have ever come across in my life. Completely inaccessible, both on a like on a literal level, like literally some of this music is inaccessible, you can't access it. But also as a musical project, it's it's inaccessible because it's such strange music, it's all too long and stuff like that. <laughs> but regardless, accord, according to those who have attempted to hear portions of what's going on on most of these albums, it's all literal music. There is something happening on all of these recordings on some level. And it blows my mind personally. It blows it apart because it's so strange. It's so incredibly strange. <laughs> There's a bit more to talk about though. Why make albums of these lengths that are unlistenable? Well, it's because the long music and stuff is something that has been explored by many artists before and it's something that Clayton Counts was absurdly interested in. You know, it's about, you know, just the length of it and stuff, bringing it to ridiculous lengths. And we're actually very lucky that in an interview with The Fly in 2010, uh, Clayton Cancer had a discussion about long players, incredibly experimental long compositions in general. And you read this, it actually gives a lot of insight into you know, his, his understanding and perception of long music and his fascination with it. And so, yeah, when it comes to long music, on a weird level, there is something fascinating about music that just plays on forever and ever and ever, regardless of who is hearing it, you know? And as mentioned, something that's been explored by a great number of artists that well precede Bull of Heaven. For example, in the interview, Counts mentions John Cage's Organ 2 As Slow As Possible, which is a self-playing organ piece that is expected to play for around 639 years. Why though? Well, because it's an expression of art that far lives the art artist in question, you know, it's continually playing for hundreds and hundreds of years, regardless of like the fact that people won't be able to listen to the whole thing. It's just music that is continually occurring, and there's something fascinating about that, I feel. Of course, when it comes to Bull of Heaven and their very, very, very long songs, which puts it lightly, um, they're dealing with the digital format, you know, showing the capability of compartmentalizing files into tinier and tinier formats to allow these incredibly long form pieces to exist, if that makes sense. Exist on some level. It's very peculiar. 
as well though uh, Count actually mentions um, an album uh, Gen, Gen Finer's Long Player which is a streaming algorithmically self-transforming piece that is set to continue for a thousand years before it just starts anew as well as mentioning the very unusual nine beat stretch by Life Inge which uh, stretched Beethoven's Ninth Symphony to 24 hours in length and this one's not mentioned actually by uh, Count, but when reading about Beethoven's Nice Symphony and the uh, Nine Beat Stretch, I was reminded of an album I actually came across once, which is uh, um, the whole project being further expanded on by an artist calling themselves Nine Beat Super Stretch, which further slowed down this whole symph this whole 24 hour symphony by a multiple of 24 bringing the length of it to around 576 hours in length. Why though? Why do this? Because on some level it's kind of interesting, right? Like the effects of incredibly slow music and how we perceive it, how we hear it, how the information is expressed to us um, and then understood inside our heads and stuff, it, I find it oddly fascinating, you know? Um, especially you know, regarding works that you literally cannot listen to. <laughs> like, like, you can't because it's literally and physically impossible, right? But there's something fascinating about that something like that exists, that it is there, that, you know, you, you could play it and it will just keep on going and going, like, regardless of anything else. And I find it fascinating, you know, these artistic expressions that are simply... You know, pushing out the capabilities of how long something can tangibly be. And Bullet Heaven, you know, across their entire career, they just continue to push that further and further, expand upon the extraordinary lengths a music file could possibly be to, be, to the point where it becomes so long in length that it will outlast the literal universe. Amazing stuff, amazing stuff. And yeah, with that then, I think we're going to come to the end of today's episode of Weird Music. Like, I think I'm really hoping that you can see why in this review I wanted to talk a bit more about the band and the project itself than the album itself, you know? Um, no, I'd love to talk about Bullet Heaven albums, but the project, it's one of those things where the project itself is kind of the main focal point, but there's some fascinating albums as well to listen to, you know, within this, within this whole project. And, including Weed Problem, which, you know, I thought was a perfect place to start with because it's the very first album. This is how they introduce themselves to the world with their music. <laughs> and yeah, I find it interesting that, you know, within this, you know, this discography, you just get these very, you know, very interesting and unique experiences that, you know, they're, they're going to do weird things to your brain when you listen to it. <laughs> truly fascinating, truly fascinating. But as well, I... I want to talk about as well, like, I found it oddly fascinating as well, like, especially when it comes to projects, your discography, things you created in your lifetime. I find it so interesting that even after the, the sad death of Clayton Counts, the very albums he helped create, they're still going to continue playing onwards and onwards, both outliving himself and actually outliving us as well. Incredibly morbid to think about, but it's just literally true. It, it is what it is, and yeah, I just found that truly fascinating. There's something like oddly, you know, it's just oddly beautiful and amazing about that. Like the, a human experience that you know humans can't experience. Basically, you know, very, very peculiar, very confusing as well. <laughs> and so yeah, with that, I, I'd like to thank you for watching today's episode of Weird Music. I'm. I'm hoping you can understand exactly why I wanted to cover them on this show, you know, I'm, you know, there was no way we could talk about, you know, those incredibly long albums, like, I'm not going to sit down and listen to an album for 5.7 years, <laughs> but I figured an ideal starting place was to start right at the beginning and, you know, just introduce the band and talk about them stuff, and to be fair, I find it to be a very enjoyable low-end drone album experience, you know, it's very interesting and just very wavy and stuff, you know. <laughs> 
And so, yeah, if uh, if you've made it to this point in the video, then and you know Bull of Heaven and their crazy discography, then by all means, let me know what your favourite Bull of Heaven album is in the comments below. I would love to know. And also, uh, another question for uh, the viewers out there. What is the longest album you've ever listened to from start to finish? I would be very interested in knowing that. <laughs> With that, I wish you all the best. Take care and bye bye for now. Bye bye.